What is going on guys? This is Mando with M Traders. We're gonna be talking about stocks. Yay, right? Um, basically, these are just my ideas and uh, what I think about the stocks is not a financial advice, so don't go out screaming to the world, Mando made me lose $1 million. That's your fault. Especially if you got $1 million, you might not be following me, right? So anyways, uh, so let's get to it. Let's go to a recap of what's going on for today. So today I did play <clears throat> what I said I was gonna play this morning. Uh, however, Microsoft uh, likes to play games and also Robinhood likes to play games. So if you're in Robinhood, get out, right? Um, not because it's not a, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay for the, a new trader that's just starting, has no clue what they're doing uh and you do not mind on execution and timing okay yeah get robin hood however if you are somewhat of an intermediate trader get out okay um i suffer multiple losses multiple days because of the execution especially in robin hood will not let me uh, uh do a sell order right away at market open it would load it'll take five minutes it'll make me verify my account right when i click sell Yes, I, you would think they will make you verify your account before you log in, before you click the sell button. You should be verified. So anyways, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So I've been playing Microsoft since the gap up on earnings. Uh, obviously, I saw it coming down. I got pretty, you know, not pretty scared, but I saw this coming down and then it went all the way right back up, right? That's usually a sign in my eyes, if you notice uh i'm always looking when i'm doing this uh like i look at everything if you notice when you touch here which is around this support area i mean resistance area it kind of got rejected so i wanted to sell market order and you have to change the price if it doesn't go in at the same price that you chose it will uh just be on hold so in order to cancel it you either go gotta go back to your account or go to account history see where you place the order cancel the order redo the order and now you have to shoot a few cents below the order and by that time it came crashing down here so i wasn't able to sell once it touched here i actually bought more because i saw something guess what at this level i saw another resistance so I said, okay, that's fine. I will buy at this level. I actually bought it like right about here. I bought about 30 more calls to make up for the loss from this big loss. You guys see this? You know, I wanted to cry. This big loss, right? 1.76%. For God's sake, if you having like 30 calls, 40 calls, that's a lot of money, guys. So, yes. I wanted to get out of Robin Hood right away, but I couldn't, you know, because of the place and whatnot. However, I did manage to recover by adding the 30 extra costs. I was able to recover everything that I had if it was at this level because I basically doubled down, made up for this half, and I saw it uh, coming up to this level. And as soon as it was turning red, I sold. Right, sold for a little bit less than I wanted, but however, I made six over six six thousand dollars that day. Anyways, so something I noticed Microsoft. I bought again at the dip, right? So around this level, I held. It dropped. It came back up again. Did the same thing. Went all the way up. And, and guess what? I wanted to do. I wanted to sell again. Robinhood would not fill my order. Would ask me for confirmation of a verification of my account send you a text and then it'll load for 15 minutes and it loaded and it loaded all the way down here and I did not sell because yeah that's Robin Hood for you anyways and then it did another amazing jump right uh 0.78% not bad this would have been much much better 1.17% that's a lot of money guys but again Robin Hood kind of messed with my feelings that day um and then i'm like okay fine i sold i had a profit i sold i waited for another entry i saw this entry right here i bought 50 calls uh, 50 calls i was pretty excited i swung the entire thing all the way to today 
uh, I saw it do the same exact thing. It went all the way down, went right back up. There were tug, you know, tug of war happening, and then it was about this area. I wanted to sell again. Guess what? Another verification, and I keep forgetting that I'm gonna have this verification on my first trade, and I let it go all the way down. Here, I actually bought more calls. I sold here. Now I went back in and I bought over here, and I actually sold about, I want to say about 30% of my. Um, my position, I think more like 40% of my position around this level and I waited and it bounced and went back up. I saw that it was kind of double tapping. I wanted to sell and again, I couldn't get filled because I was using Robinhood. So anyways, long story short, I'm switching over. Um, I already put 50% of my account. I stopped utilizing it. It's very hard not to utilize, you know, your funds how you wanted to but I had to cut 50% of my account because it's gonna go now over to Tastyworks the execution is fantastic I like them and yes I'm not gonna make say nothing bad by the way it's one dollar to open zero dollars to close max cap is ten dollars if you buy 20 contracts you pay ten dollars if you buy nine contracts you pay nine dollars and zero to close that's not bad right Especially if you're buying $100 uh, stocks or contracts that are each share is worth 100 bucks. You guys catch the drift. So that was my play on Microsoft. Um, somewhat profitable. I'm actually down because of other things that I play. I felt lucky and I gambled on INTC. You guys know what that happened. Yeah, I gambled right over here. Um, and then I was also uh, actually up in NVIDIA. I bought NVIDIA on this level right here. I was like very happy and I'm like, okay, I think it's gonna go up. I'm gonna hold because it should, you know, reverse to the 190s, 192s, because we saw a pattern go happening, you know, previous days. It was doing the same exact thing. And what happens where INTC drops? Well, it brings NVIDIA with him or her, whatever you want it. Uh, name INTC uh, it brought it down and yes I lost the entire call why did I why did I lose the call well I do short expiration dates because two things it's cheaper and you make money faster right so something cool about options is whenever you buy something that's the max limit you can lose Unless you're selling a call or selling a put, then you got unlimited loss and cap profit. I don't like that. So, um, so yes, uh, number one, it is, you know, it's a lot cheaper. And number two, you make more money faster, right? Versus if you buy a far out in expiration and very far strike price. Yeah, no. I'm not an expert in options. However, I know how they work. But if you want to, kind of have somebody to explain to you how they work. Look at it on YouTube. There's a lot more people more experienced than me that know what they're doing. I just like options because it's a lot, uh, it's, a, it's a vehicle to make money faster. Especially if you are, especially if you are, um, uh, want, have a small account and you want to like leverage your account. You can have like a uh, TradeNet. TradeNet does the same, uh, kind of the same thing only with like 500 bucks, they give $14,000 worth of uh, buying power and with 3,000, they give you $80,000 of buying power. Uh, but I prefer doing an options because it's your money and you know you're gonna lose it. If you lose it, okay, you know, you move on, right? So that being said, that was my play on NVIDIA. Uh, I actually lost, INTC I lost and Microsoft kinda helped me revive. Now, Another one that I played today was Disney. So everybody was happy that Disney was going up, 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 up. I learned, I've been learning a few things, you know, lately when I'm playing options. One of them, you are a lot more patient um, when it comes to your entries and your exits because you know you won't be able to get out and um, basically you will lose your entire account or you will make your entire account 20 times right uh 
So, anyways, we saw everybody was trading the hype, 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 hype. From 132 to 143, the, the hype was being traded. And once it was an all-time high, it actually just came here. It did a little fake out. Oh, it's going up again, guys. And not, right? It dropped. I brought a lot of people down with it. And, well, I wasn't in it. Unfortunately, I would have bought here and then probably would have sold right away. But like always, Robin Hood would have, you know, um, got me and I would have probably end up right down here. So good thing I didn't swing Disney. Um, however, I did bought, uh, it went back up, it rejected, it went back down. It formed a double bottom. Uh, let me see, because this thing, let's say to, uh, need to change the settings because all right, better, right? Because it, it was merging with this and it's the same color. So I saw that it got rejected right down here. If you notice, this was a previous rejection area and also was a previous, kind of like a support area, right? It rejected, came back down, retested this 137-ish, 0.7 area. And I loaded up uh, on calls of Disney. Uh, when we loaded up, only about 10 calls. Kind of made for my losses in another trade that I was doing, which it was actually Microsoft. It went down when it was up. It could I wouldn't be able to sell. So, anyways, this kind of helped me out for the day, right? Um, it bounced from here. I saw a double bottom. I saw it was a previous resistance. I saw it was a previous support. I decided to go all in. Not all in. Ten calls. All right. So anyways, 10 calls at expiration of 139. 139 hit very easily, came back down. I sold at 140.1, I think. And then it went all the way up to what, 14.80. You know, I missed out like in 70 cents. That's a lot of money. It's like kind of like 700 bucks additional. 70 cents is like 700 bucks when you do calls. So uh, I missed out on that. And then it came back down. Now. I am going to play Disney again. I like this one a lot. Um, a lot of reasons. They had a lot of going on, you know, pretty bullish, came back down. You need a pullback. I'm like, for God's sake, look at this. You know, from 111 to 143, come on, man. You need you need to have a pullback. You cannot go up forever and not, never pull back. Now, Disney has a lot going for them. I was watching a lot of articles. I was watching a lot of... Uh, uh, videos and news and things like that and I watch Avengers so if you watch Avenger, Avengers you know why right that was pretty much the hype before the, you know the the storm before the calm uh, it went all the way up because it was movie weekend I went actually went on Thursday night and I saw it uh, I should have played it and then I would have sold hopefully somewhere over here I learned my lesson sell pre-market if you're up Right, that's the way I see it. Um, again, it's not advice. Now, Disney has a lot of things going on for them. So you got, one of the things is you got uh, the Avengers movie, okay. Well, guess what? They're not gonna remake it and you're not gonna go rewatch it again. There's not gonna be a reopening of the, you know, another debut of the movie, right? So, you're not gonna have that hype. However, this is gonna trigger other hypes or other things that Disney has behind it. Remember, I remember I have a daughter. My daughter is five years old. Uh, we watched Frozen one year. I don't remember when it was. Four years later, she was still singing the same song. It was Frozen everything. Frozen customs, Frozen videos, Frozen Disney World, Frozen... Or whatever you want to call it, little toys and speakers and all that. Everything was frozen. So it's not only about uh, me also working in, you know, in, uh, in the manufacturing industry and selling. Um, it's not only about, you know, the main product. So you may basically the film was a big advertisement for products to come or previous movies. So now people are going to watch Ant-Man because... Now you want to know what's the quantum realm and they're going to go watch um, 
Captain Marvel. I haven't watched Captain Marvel. So now I got to go watch Captain Marvel because of the uh, movie. So most likely I got to go buy the movie now and watch Captain Marvel. Um, now I also sell toys. So I do have the Thanos gauntlet, right? Um, I actually bought it when the first movie came out. It was that that toy was super hot. It was selling for like $300 and the original price was 100 uh, it actually went all the way down to $63. Now, guess what? It's back above $100. Uh, Amazon sold out. So, what is it doing? I already started seeing it's triggering, you know, all these products that are going to be buying after the fact that the movie came out. So, it's going to be very strong um, catalyst for things to come. Also, it's going to add to that... Um, to the uh, what is it Disney Plus uh, the new streaming service they're gonna have now people are gonna want to buy uh, that service so they can watch more of those movies that they weren't able to watch so it's gonna trigger a lot of stuff it's gonna have a dominant effect on on the trails right which in my eyes is gonna make a lot more money than the actual movie itself in the long term of course it's not gonna make one billion dollars worth of toys in five days, right, like it did in the movie. But overall, you know, you might have, you know, five more years or another theme park of Marvel, you know, what happened with Star Wars? They created a theme park. Now they have a theme park of um, Star Wars in, uh, in actually in Disney World, right? Um, so all those things happening, I like it. I'm gonna play it. I think the pullback is very close to the bottom. Uh, obviously I play calls and puts, so I'm not going to be able to do it until market open. So I'm going to wait. The rule of thumb for me is if I'm up sell in the first five minutes, if I'm down, wait, or if I'm not in at all, wait five minutes, do not buy in the first five minutes because you need to see what direction is going. If it's going to go up, you know, it's going to pull back. Once you in the pullback, then whatever you feel comfortable, you add in. So that's why. The other thing is, I don't know if you guys know this. If you're a beginner, you might not know this. But if you go, if you got TOS and you go to the trade section, and you click on Disney in today's option statistics. This is the first thing I started learning. Kind of, you know, somebody told me about cows and puts, and I'm like, well, can this? There's somewhere where you can see what's the ratio of, you know, what's what. Well, this one, the put call ratio is something I use. If it's below 0.4, it's actually pretty bullish. Um, like this one, there's 400, for yesterday's statistics, uh, there were 422,000 calls versus 100,000 puts. What do you guys think it's gonna do tomorrow? Hmm. Or the long term? You know, you got uh, 400,000 puts, I mean calls versus 100. Now you got different expirations. Yes, I know. You, I don't want all the technical guys telling me well, Mando, you got expirations on April 2020. Well, yeah, I know that. But I'm just saying, it's just the, the flow that came in today was a lot more bullish, right? You got the weeklies, 10 May, 17 May, 24, 31, blah, 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 blah. You have a lot different uh, options. So I look at this a lot. I like to see, oh, there's a lot of calls, there's a lot of volume, a lot of people are actually interested in this stock. You want to see volume, you want to see people coming in, you want to see people buying. You also wanted to see people selling, you know, uh, selling the actual, the hype. They had to take profit, right? You would want to take profit. Guess what? Whenever you sell a stock, if you have like a million shares, it starts going down. The price starts going down because the demand is not there. In case you didn't know that, if you're a newbie, well, you might have not known that. Anyways, so Disney is one that I'm definitely going to play. Another one that uh, it's actually pretty bullish. Um, if you, if everybody knows why did it went down, my understanding it was because of I love that uh, app. Uh, BP earnings comes in at $2.4 billion versus $2.3 billion at, as expected. So, I don't know. We'll look at BP right now. So, maybe that was a, that was a bullish catalyst. Anyways, it was because of the Amazon One Day Prime. Remember, 
target. They actually partners with Kohl's. Uh, which Kohl's, where are we in Kohl's? KSS uh, came over here. Uh, actually, Kohl's is one of the most shortest stocks. However, a lot of people, a lot of analysts are bullish on Kohl's because they actually are also partners with Amazon, which is going to have the one day um, catalyst. It's going to have the one the, the one day prime. So that's going to be a catalyst. It's also following kind of a nice bouncy. You guys see it? A nice bouncy uh, trend upwards, right? It, cre it created a higher low. Didn't do a higher high, but it did a higher low. So there's still hope that this thing is going to bounce probably wants to retest this 100 SMA uh, and then keep going up upwards. Now, the good thing that I like about Amazon, it's not an all time high. Notice that most of the stocks that were all time highs dropped. Like the all of them dropped um, when they have uh, market hours. This one is not. We're still a little bit ways to go. 20. 50 is the all-time high so we might want to get there now that being said going back to target target partners with Kohl's Kohl's is part of Amazon or not part of Amazon but they are actually um, um, also partners yeah you know and this this one I just I just like target I usually go to show with Target, so I don't have to go to Walmart. Um, it's just better buy. I just go with the buy from a, a Target. But anyways, if you guys see here, you guys see this. Oh, I hate this one. I got to change it. So for Target, what I like Target, why am I bullish? Yeah, it pulled back. Yes, it did. Uh, my eyes I got to be kind of. Okay, come on. All right, there you go. So he tested this area, which was a support. Uh, it rejected from the support, came right back up. A very strong, went from like 74 to 77.9. Wow, that's a lot of moolah if you had a bunch of calls. Came back down and he rejected of this 200 SMA. So it passed the 200 SMA, rejected, retested 200 SMA, rejected, and then kept going up, went back down, touched the 200 SMA, rejected, and it should go in an uptrend now. Now, that's, this is one that I'm going to play tomorrow, depending on what I see. The one that I already started playing, because I learned, I'm like, you know, common sense, consistency, and... Kind of, you know, what are you looking at, right? Or, you know, uh, trends. So I've been looking at most trends or companies that are going into earnings. That whenever they go into earnings, there's a hype going and they start going up. Disney. Earnings. This was an investor's meeting. So, okay, maybe not that, but still. Earnings one is coming, so guess what? Started going up. Besides the movie, they had investors meeting, movie coming out. Now this, I just will be careful when you're an all-time high going into a um, earnings. Your expectations were, you know, down here. Now they're gonna be up here, because now the stock is so high that you need. Very, very bullish expectations in order for you to kind of, or the traders to go, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to buy more stocks because when you go up high, this might happen. And I was going to play puts, but unfortunately my boss came in and I couldn't play puts. Anyways, um, so again, this might not be a 52 or might it be a 52 week high. This was an all-time high. Yes, it was, sir. So you came in an all-time high at 1297. Your expectations were right here. Now they're up here. Camera. 
Okay, they're up here, and so you went an all-time high, and it drops because now your expectations kind of got crushed and burned, and it, this happens. It dropped a hundred dollars. It took pretty much um, close to uh, kind of this area right here. It took on probably since. April 1st to go up a hundred dollars in one day this thing drops Just because the expectations were too high. It was an all-time high for me. I would have done puts. However, I missed my entry um, It was fine. I was gonna buy five minutes I, I usually buy the opposite of whatever is doing on pre earnings uh, That's only that's strictly gambling. It's not uh, I know what's going to happen, but usually I seen what has happened to me before and it does the opposite of what it's going to do out on earnings. Um, example, Microsoft, I guess Microsoft is a good example. Uh, on that day, Microsoft before the gap, you can see it better in five minutes, kind of went up and then this one just, just dropped. When it was right here, I bought. Yeah, so I was actually pretty happy. Anyway, so yeah, it kind of dropped and then it went down. So it kind of does the opposite. I mean, it's not a perfect example, but it's somewhat of a good example. Okay, um, so yes, uh, usually earnings kind of the same. Um, it follows some type of trend. That's why I mean Walmart. Walmart actually dropped. Do you guys know why it dropped? Well, the coincidence is that besides being Oh, not, it's not at an all-time high. Oh, but you guys see this watch pattern? I do. Thank God. And I think this is a rising wedge, which if I'm not mistaken, it is a bearish sign. And a buy call. Look, look, look how perfect that is. Well, certain, somewhat perfect. So according to this, should go back up. It went back up. It tested. It should drop. And and guess where it might be dropping? Right on earnings. God, and I got calls. I might have to get out. I did not see this. So thank you guys for for making make uh, for making me make this video. Now I know what's going to happen. Now that being said, this is also in my eyes. A descending wedge kind of right yeah you know my drives might not be the best however I see some type of wedge I'm pretty sure you guys see it too right so oh I went in I actually bought this one I bought it at the dip um, going into earnings I'm gonna play the hype right by the rumor, sell the news, you know, uh, kind of what we learn, and it's funny because it's true. So a lot of people are like, yeah, that's funny because he goes up and then the news come out, hey, Amazon is going to have one, one day prime drops, you know, and done. Um, I'm getting close to the 30 minute mark, so 28 minutes. Hopefully I kind of make it interesting and kind of see my, my views on stocks and why do I place this type of stocks and when do I play and when do I see catalysts, things like that. Uh, again, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure some other people would appreciate, you know, oh, okay, I see the same thing as this guy sees. Or I, I know I appreciate when I was looking at gold today because I played JNUG, I'm like, I see something most people don't see. You know what? I just left that freaking um, uh, my Fibonacci for main reason. I drew this. I don't know when did I draw. When did I draw it? Back in it was this day because this was the high. Back in March twenty seven, I drew this, and I just left it there. Never came back to it. The funny thing is like. 
Notice how this, it actually acted as this line, our 0% retracement, actually acted as resistance several times. And once it acted right here, it was a clear rejection, but it kept holding right below resistance and then it went up and then it tried back back uh, down to pull back. Um, you guys cannot see it very clearly, but I will remove drawing. Over remote drawing. Now you can see it, it rejected. And then it almost perfectly rejected out of the 1290, which is this 23.6 retracement. Um, and perfectly. And I, I, guys, I drew this March 27, and it's, it's like acting almost perfectly. Look over here, it got rejected. It got rejected right at this level. I haven't touched it. I promise you. I swear to you, um, yeah, I haven't touched it. You know, Fibonacci are actually very nice ways to find your support and resistance if you don't know how to draw and all that stuff. It's not not bad. You find your lowest point wherever time frame you're looking at, and then you put in your highest point, and then voila, you got your retracements. Now, funny thing is, it I was watching this, and I'm like, oh look, it acted as resistance. I'm like, oh look, it acted as uh, support. And then this happens, and then this happens today. When I saw it rejecting here, I'm like, you know what? I'm buying gold just because it was at this retracement. So it's showing a uh, change in uptrend. It's, that's going to go uh, bullish. Might want to change in uptrend. And then it kind of also looks as a descending wedge pattern. Ascending, descending. So it's like when it's in, uh, going in uptrend and then... Um, the watch is descending, it's bullish. And please, people in stock tweets, tell me I'm wrong because somehow, some way, every time somebody tells me I'm wrong, it goes my way. So please tell me I'm wrong so it can go my way. Um, so supposedly, this is a uh, watch. You might not see it here, it might, it might be on the daily, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I really don't want to. I really don't want to raise my Fibonacci. There you go. As we see, this is one is in the daily. Since we're right in the middle, traveling upwards towards the resistance, this might be a breakout, or there's going to be a confirmation. You know, pull back down to this level and then pull back up and you actually do a, a bullish push. That's what I'm seeing uh, in gold. I was very happy. I bought it when it was at uh, 1281. I went into JNOG. By the way, you guys know that JNOG and JDSD, you can do call and puts. So that's, I think, the only like leverage ETF that you can actually buy options on. I wish that you could do that on Jugas and Digas. I, I will be going crazy all over. Um, however, they don't. So, boo. Somebody needs to call the Credit Suisse and tell them. Uh, anyways, so that's that. And I'm at 33 minutes. God, let's put, let's make it 35 minutes and then we're done. NG, what are we seeing in NG? Okay, so the rallies. You see this? This pattern, well, we had some bullish weather come in. Uh, market reacted to the bullish weather because the market is just like literally, even though it was nothing, I had like literally, I had like one inch of snow for 30 minutes in the morning and that was it. Uh, and then I was back to my shorts and sandals uh, at 60, to 70 degrees, right? But it reacted so heavily on those news and it just shot up. 6.7%. So if you were in US, that equals kind of, they say it's three times leverage. I promise you, I've been kind of tracking it. It only looks like twice, two times leverage, even though they say it's three times leverage, bull bear. Um, but it's like probably like 12, uh, it was almost like 13, 14% on US, which is not a bad catalyst. Now, what I see here, it is that now we're going to change in the downtrend. Why? Because fundamentals said so. Fundamentals say it's going in a downtrend. 
Uh, we have bearish, uh, more bearish weather coming in. There's no more bullish to support the bulls going upwards uh, on a bull run. So the bears will be selling the rally. It will go down, it will pull back most likely to the 2.5 area. We saw this being as a strong uh, multi-year support. So it, I think it will pull to this area before continuing an uptrend and now actually going into a bullish run for the May, for the months of June, July. In August, September would actually be bearish because it, we're going to autumn. Autumn is usually not cold, not hot, but nobody uses heater, nobody uses ACs. So remember, summer, hot, and winter, cold. Those are the main two. All right. So 35 minutes and 37 seconds. All right. So hopefully you guys like this video. I know it was very, very long. However, um, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed it and kind of have an idea of why I play things and why I do things the way I do. And I almost had a heart attack because I thought I had my mic off. Should do a test before I actually record. However, I did have it on. So, fantastic. So, hopefully I have better sound. Next time, I bought a lot of foams, uh, soundproofing foams, so I can have it on the, on the walls. And you guys will be able to hear me. So I will do a recap in or my play for tomorrow morning in the morning and I'm going to post it, upload it in YouTube. So, and if you want to join our Discord chat and just hear me talk all day uh, along with other great um, traders, uh, I got Ken, Ken R, I got Brent. Brent is amazing with options. Ken is amazing with options. There, I, you know, I look up to those guys, uh, especially the Walkinator which is uh, Ken because he makes a hundred thousand dollar days. Yeah, and that is the same thing that we play. I'm just a bit more scared than he, than, than he is. He just say, yeah, yeah, I lost. I lost, okay, it's okay. I made a hundred K, it's okay. So I look up to those guys. Um, and, you know, shout out to the MT crew, everybody that's there every single day, helping everybody else and really answering the questions of all, all the new traders, um, you know, Doing a great job. God, it's 37 minutes. Okay. Peace.